Residents in several states such as Utah and Washington mysteriously received a delivery from seeds from China, and yet they hadn't actually ordered them. Officials are now urging people to report any unsolicited seeds because they might be harmful to American agriculture. U.S. residents reported receiving packets of seeds in the mail that they didn't order. Based on photos, the seeds appear to have been mailed in white pouches displaying Chinese lettering and the words China Post. Many agricultural officials are urging residents not to plant the seeds because the impact of them is unknown. They could be invasive, introduce diseases to local plants, or be harmful to livestock. Some of the packages were labeled to say they contained jewelry. Officials are asking for people to report all unsolicited seeds coming from China. A leading professor of plant pathology and environmental microbiology said the seeds may harbor plant pathogens or insects, which could affect similar crops grown in the U.S. for income and food or as food for animals. Seed introduction is tightly regulated. The Agricultural Department's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service has strict rules for the importation of plants and seeds. Utah's Department of Agriculture and Food will likely team up with Customs and Border Protection to investigate. The Chinese embassy in Washington did not respond to a request for comment. Following weeks of pressure, Germany for the first time threatened Beijing with consequences for cracking down on Hong Kong's freedoms. A German lawmaker of the ruling party explains Germany's most cautious approach toward the CCP. NTD's Germany correspondent Christian Watson has more. The German parliament behind me is currently on summer break. Many are wondering how to understand Germany's relatively muted response after Beijing imposed this controversial national security law in Hong Kong. But now signs that Germany is speaking more loudly. German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas for the first time threatened China directly with concrete consequences for undermining the one country, two systems principle in Hong Kong. He has mentioned an end to Germany's extradition treaty with Hong Kong, an easy entry into Germany for Hong Kongers and a weapons export ban to the city. Criticizing Beijing has always been a balancing act for Berlin. We are not enemies of China and we make that very clear, but we find China's political behavior unacceptable. The foreign minister's announcements follow increasing pressure from within the German government, the public and even some business groups to take a tougher stance toward the CCP. For German Chancellor Angela Merkel, three things have been a priority for most of her 15-year reign and 12 trips to China – trade, dialogue and not upsetting Beijing. We have to keep talking. We must not allow the thread of conversation to break off and provoke an escalation of the relationship, which then leaves us voiceless. When Beijing comes to an arrangement, it is always because they associate certain interests with us. So far, the engagement has borne fruits for Germany, at least in the economic arena. Since Merkel took office, German exports to China increased by five times to just under $110 billion, or about 3% of the GDP. For the German government, the motto has been, change through trade. In her third year in office, Merkel met the Dalai Lama, but following anger from Beijing, she has gradually treaded more cautiously on human rights issues. At the beginning of Germany's six-month presidency of the EU on July 1st, she stressed the value of fundamental rights. In the same speech at the European Parliament, she didn't mention Hong Kong a single time. Instead, she emphasized the need for open dialogue with China. We have gained nothing if we secure material prosperity in cooperation with China or other countries but lose our identity. Then we would really be the losers. Observers say Germany hardening its stance would significantly influence the EU's policy toward the CCP. Reporting by Christian Watchen, NTD News, Berlin. An Indian court has asked Chinese tech giant Alibaba and its co-founder Jack Ma to present evidence about its news operations. A former employee claimed he was unfairly dismissed for refusing to censor content carried by Alibaba apps.
An Indian court has summoned Alibaba and its founder Jack Ma in a case in which a former employee in India says he was wrongfully fired after objecting to what he saw as censorship and fake news on company apps. The case comes just weeks after India cited security concerns in banning Alibaba's UC News, UC Browser and 57 other Chinese apps after a clash between the two countries' forces on their shared border. Following the ban, which was criticised by China, India sought written answers from all affected companies, including whether they censored content or acted for any foreign government. In court filings dated July 20 and previously not reported, the former employee of Alibaba's UC Web, Pushpandra Singh Palmer, alleges the company used to censor content seen as unfavourable to China and its apps UC Browser and UC News showcased false news to, quote, cause social and political turmoil. A civil judge from a district court in Gurugram has issued summons for Alibaba, Jack Ma and about a dozen individuals or company units, asking them to appear in court or through a lawyer on July 29. According to the summons, the judge has also sought written responses from the company and its executives within 30 days. The court case is the latest hurdle for Alibaba in India after the Indian government's app ban, following which UC Web has started laying off some staff in the country. Alibaba representatives did not respond to requests for comment from the company or on behalf of Jack Ma. Taiwan is among the first countries in Asia to resume an island hopping cruise after the pandemic brought the industry to a virtual standstill. About 900 holidaymakers are adapting to new safety measures when boarding Explorer Dream embarking from one of Taiwan's northern ports. The company now offers trips of up to five days from Taiwan to its scenic outlying islands. Taiwan has only 11 active cases and has had no local transmission of the virus for more than three months. A 22-year-old passenger said it is pretty safe to travel in Taiwan. Due to the coronavirus, we can't go aboard, but I still feel like going out. So I sign up for the island hopping trip of the Explorer Dream. I don't worry about the epidemic too much because I think it is pretty safe in Taiwan right now. It's part of a government effort to boost a tourism industry badly hit by the pandemic. Back in mid-March, Taiwan largely closed its borders. It advised its citizens not to travel overseas unless absolutely necessary. The sales manager of the cruise line said the company has done a lot of preparation under the guidance of authorities. We checked the temperature of passengers. We asked people to fill in the form of the health declaration in advance, and we've changed our dining concept. Also in the semi-buffet area, we added contactless hand-washing machines, which can automatically dispense soap, water and paper towels. The crew members will undergo a 21-day health screening before boarding, and all frontline service staff are required to wear masks and gloves. The buffet service has been replaced with set meals, dining tables are set apart, and the onboard casino and spa are shut. The ship will only carry a third of its maximum passenger limit and is equipped with 22 wards to isolate passengers if any fall ill.